you are going to teach UAP. Everyone understand UAP? You are replacing more certified nursing assistant. And if they are saying UAP, that means they're not licensed. What job can they do? Same as CNA. Tell me what CNA can do. What job CNA can do? Vital sign. Vital sign, okay. What else? Bad making. Bad making, yes, they can do the bad. What else? Bad assessment. Would you have CNA do assessment? They can help you for vital sign, but legally, who does assessment? Even you are continuing, you do assessment, but who would be signing your assessment more is RN. CNA can help you to check the vital sign, maybe telling you what's wrong with your patient. That's okay. It's very helpful. Believe me or not, I believe good CNAs are very good, very helpful in patient care because they are with the patients all the time. But they can they do vital sign? Yeah. What about I and O? Yes. They can help you if you have UAP and you are going home and you have to have INOs and can UAP empty the urine bag? Yes. Can CNA empty the urine bag? Yes. They all do the same thing, but they'll come and tell you how much is intake and output. But real charting should be done by license because you've got to see how much is intake and output. They have their sheet and they come back. And what else can they do? Feed patient? Can do feeding? Okay, can anima you give them? Dressing? Any dressings, anima? No. If your patient is having a chest pain and you're going to give pain medication, who really should check the vital sign? Yes. Us. Yes. Remember, remember one word, a stable patient, you give it to them. Feeding patient, patient had a stroke 10 years ago and no problem in swallowing, they didn't say dysphagia, can you assign CNA to feed her? Yes. But what about patient who had a new stroke and had a severe dysphagia? Would you give CNA? No. No. In your questions, no. And I'll tell you, a lot of time you see things in clinical differently. So when you are answering your question, don't answer the way you thought in clinical may not be right. Same thing in Pete's question, growth and development. Your child may be growing differently. Then what is the normal scale? So remember, CNA, UAP, they are helping you. You are more are responsible to see the work is done. And questions are going to be for teaching, just like cardiac patient, diet question, assessing the diet, make sure the water, they're not drinking a lot of them, intake and output, they can help you and emulate the patient. Can they emulate them with a new patient with surgery with a walker or with a uh, patient with your other way? Immediately after surgery, no. Who should be assessing RN, physical therapy, and they need to train the patient. Once they stabilize, patient had hip fracture 10 years ago, walking with a walker, that's okay. Patient has been 10 years. Somebody who came back hip surgery today, you cannot assign. Their questions are going to be, I'll tell you, don't surprise your LBN job description. And they will be asking you what all job you're going to do and what will come priority. So as I'm moving, I'm making you alert that questions are a little different in your HSC and your NCLEPS exam. So your leadership questions are going to be there and you have to be a good leader who can be a benefit to the hospital and benefit for your patient, right? Not we are there just to do our job, but we want to be productive. So I will be talking that, but let's finish a little bit cardio. Make sure pass the signing sheet so everyone can sign. If you did sign in the morning, make sure we sign. And I'm going to go over on number 10, is a virtual disease. Is it poor circulation? And what do you teach here as smoking? Underline the word. It is a poor circulation. And also, warm clothes is good when you have poor circulation. But what is your first priority would be? As smoking. Renal disease, you will go be triggered with second line cold. Your first answer should be cold. Both of them are poor circulation in the extremity and the ear and the nose and all that area. They're poor circulation. 
So what if this is, yeah, the fold is not good, you cover the area, but what is your first answer here? Cut down, teach them for smoking. Smoking is not good for circulation. Renal disease is cold is your first answer, then you go smoking, and then you go a stress. What medication do you give to improve circulation? Let me tell you, is your blood pressure medication. You have underneath there, Procardia. What is Procardia? Is calcium channel blocker. All your blood pressure medication improves circulation. Now some, also you can use, instead of nitroglycerin, you can give them calcium channel blocker or beta blocker. For your chest pain also, question can be, you can give them the blood pressure medication. So you have in calcium channel blocker, I want you to write down, highlight the word Procardia. And Procardia is a blood pressure medication. Procardia can be used as PRN, it says there, and PRN sublingual also for very high blood pressure. If you have a question, patient blood pressure medication was given in the morning, and patient blood pressure goes very high. What do you do? And maybe answer Procardia sublingual. So Procardia is a calcium channel blocker, and it's a blood pressure medication, but this is the drug. You can use it more sublingual in PRN basis. And also, it improves the circulation. These are vasodilators. They dilate the blood vessel, improving the circulation. Number 12 is pericarditis. Pericarditis, inflammation, of the lining outside. Myocardium when you have angina and you have a patient with MI. Endocarditis when the valves are bad, like rheumatic fever. So everyone is okay. How many layers we have? Pericarditis, myocarditis, endocarditis. Any question, endocarditis, bed rest is important. Giving medication is important for your patient. And pericarditis, they got to have inflammation removed. Sometimes they have fluid around the heart and they can remove the fluid too. Number 13 is abdominal aneurysm. What is the word aneurysm? I want you to highlight the word there and write down the blood pressure is high. And what does it do? You have to teach patient here lowering the blood pressure. What is aneurysm means dilation of the blood vessel. The blood vessel, if they give you a question, abdominal, aorta, add the word AA aneurysm, abdominal aortic aneurysm. That's in the stomach, in the abdominal area. This is a aneurysm. Aneurysm is a dilation. So what is dilation is you can feel like a big mass in the stomach. So what is a patient has abdominal aneurysm, when you touch them, you can feel a big mass. And what do you feel in the mass? Pulsation, because the blood is alive and they're flowing the blood and when you touch them, you can feel a pulse. Some question they do ask, what is abdominal aneurysm is? Pulsation in the mass and patient has a mass in the stomach, and that's aneurysm. But what do you control for aneurysm question? Are blood pressure. How do you control blood pressure? What are the other questions are on blood? I want you to go a little bit blood pressure. How do we lower the blood pressure? Reduce sodium. Very good. Somebody said reduce sodium. Yes. Okay, what else? Medication. Medication. Very good. All right, what else can you teach the patient? Exercise. Exercise, okay. Rest, good. Stress. That is very important. Very important. That's what I was waiting to listen. Cholesterol. Yes, cholesterol. All are very good answers. All are good. Okay. But let me remind, how does the blood pressure goes up? When you are in pain. What do you do for your patient? Why, Give the pain medic. Yes, I will go on that. Very good. And so I said, what is one of the reasons is here is the pain. Are you going to cut down the pain anywhere patient has? Why? Because what will happen? Blood pressure goes up. 
Very good answer. Somebody said here is quiet environment. What is the meaning, quiet environment? Non-stimulating environment. What is non-stimulating? It's not the light here too much. People, you don't want somebody and they come and raise your blood pressure. <laughs> Doesn't it happen? Yes. And what happened? You don't want the telephone, but somebody calls you and your blood pressure goes up. Cut down the telephone. Cut down the visitors. Look at the answers. They're not giving anything with medication. Your answer is quiet environment. And where is the aneurysm? I'm talking in cardio, but remember, everyone, there are two aneurysms. If you read your question, and they're saying abdominal aortic aneurysm, that's right here in the abdomen. And it goes up here in thoracic. There can be aneurysm in thoracic, but you cannot feel. Problem would be more breathing problem, because that, and maybe swallowing problem. But what happened, this aneurysm goes up in cerebral artery, which is in the brain. What does it cause here? It will rupture, and what does it cause here? Again, patient is going in, I see, See how your questions are. Patient is admitted with aneurysm. What do you do? They didn't give you any answer. One answer is here, quiet environment. Patient has cerebral aneurysm. What is the priority here? Same, control the blood pressure, environment. What else is here with ICP? I said earlier, stool softener. That may be only one answer you have. That's a stool softener. What do you cut down here? Stimulation, stress, constipation. Why? Because it's going to cause the rupture. See how we got to start thinking all around our question. Not one answer. Hypertension, give blood pressure medication. Cut down salt. Yes, those are right answers. But remember, sometimes everyone knows in your exam all that apply answers. Not one answer, all that apply. That means you got to know more. Yes, you know salt you add there, you know teaching here, environment, you can tell them quiet environment. If you have stool softener, that may be good, especially for cerebral aneurysm. What can happen if it rupture is the bleeding. Everyone is okay, question? Patient is admitted with aortic aneurysm or cerebral aneurysm. What are we controlling here? Blood pressure. What are we preventing here? Rupture. If the aneurysm gets bigger, then they do the surgery. If it doesn't get bigger, you've got to monitor them. And they got to keep on doing CT scan to see how bigger it is until they're going to do the surgery. All your questions are teaching questions. Patient is going home, diet, salt, medication, check blood pressure daily, monitor for sign of rupture. If you have an abdomen, pain wasn't bad. Now patient has pain in the back, radiating downward. That means pain is getting worse. That means maybe aneurysm has been ruptured. So everyone is okay, the word aneurysm here? What do we control here? Blood pressure. How many types of aneurysm are? Aortic aneurysm, cerebral aneurysm. Cerebral, first answer, think about ICP, stool softener, all your questions control the blood pressure. I will move on, abdominal aneurysm with it a little bit before we finish is neurological disorder. Patient has neurological problem. Now, we are nurses and your question is, patient felt neurological. What have we monitoring neurological? You guys already said ICP. What do we monitor neurological assessment? ICP. And which patient are we monitoring neurological assessment? What is the first sign of your ICP is? Level of consciousness. And it says here drowsiness. Why is drowsiness? I want you to add that early sign of level of consciousness is drowsiness. So make sure you add their level of consciousness and the word is called drowsiness. 
Early sign, patient complain dizziness. I want you to write down vomiting. Anytime patient hit his head, patient is vomiting. So I'm writing here level of consciousness. And what is early sign of level of consciousness? Dizziness. Then I said headache and vomiting. Very important for your testing now that we know patient who is having this. What is the next thing is very important, the vital sign. What are the vital signs in ICP is opposite to shock. What is in shock? Low blood pressure. What is here? Blood pressure is going up and pulse is going down and respiration is going down. What is in shock? I'm writing here underneath. Blood pressure is dropping. Pulse is high. Respiration is high. Now, all in your exam, they don't give all the vital signs. They said one, patient complains headache. Another answer they gave, patient has bradycardia. Patient is vomiting. What are you monitoring, ICP? Remember the word bradycardia, ICP, tachycardia, shock. Are we clear? Shock and ICP are totally opposite. Are we okay? And so what are you monitoring? Vital signs. I want you to highlight that. Decreasing pulse, decreasing respiration. Your brain is controlling the body temperature. So what happens when you have a brain injury? The temperature is high. So these patients, two things are high. Temperature is high, blood pressure is high, pulse and respiration is low. For this test, is this much? You got to know. There's more to know on ICP. Now what does the patient have in ICP is here that at least you recognize patient is changing level of consciousness. Now which patient are you going to monitor? Is you guys said earlier, head injury, make sure, head injury. If they're saying cerebral hemorrhage, epidural hemorrhage, what do you monitor? Your first answer, ICP. Patient hit his head. What do you monitor for your patient is ICP. But does it cover ICP in our observation? No. So what do you monitor? So when they're saying patient, you're monitoring ICP, we're doing what assessment? Neurological. We are monitoring level of consciousness. We are monitoring vital sign. And what is the third thing is eyes, pupil reaction. Now what is pupil reaction is for your patient, now it says the word para. You guys have remembered that word. <coughs> and what do you do? You bring the light close to the eye. And what will happen if you bring the light, the pupil is becoming smaller. So what is the word is called? Constriction. So what is it happening? Constricted. But they gave you a question, patient hit his head. Patient has head injury. I wrote it down, level of consciousness, vital sign, pupil reaction, and you guys have in your notes, I want you to highlight the word where it says dilated. What is the meaning dilated? It's not responding to the light. And what is the meaning is fixed pupil is not moving. That means is what? Patient has ICP. Are we clear? Now, if they're saying people are responding, that's normal. People are smaller, that is normal. So remembering one word, parla, but we don't know what are we looking in parla, is important, is what happened to the patient when you bring the light, the, when you bring the light, the pupil becomes smaller. Are we clear? That's normal. But in your question, they said patient came in, and patient hit his head. A patient has head injury, but his pupil are not responding, or they are fixed and dilated, then immediately, what is sign of ICP? I'll be clear, everyone is okay. So what do we monitor when your patient hit his head? ICP. 
and you have a form and you've got to fill it out. Now I'll tell you, there are places when patient fell and the nurses did not do their complete assessment. And what happened to the patient? And you're writing, patient hit his head. You're writing, patient hit his head, but you haven't done anything. And what happened after three days? This patient was bleeding, he was on Cumadine, he goes to the hospital and he died. Now whose fault is here? Us. Why? I am monitoring patient. But what are we monitoring patient? There's no documentation. What do we have documentation here? Is a form which has neurological assessment. So what do we do every 15 minutes? We go check the pupil, check the vital sign, and you see the blood pressure was 130, now the blood pressure 150, pulse is dropping, and this is the way for your NCLEX exam R. You will open that chart, and they're going to give you a whole history of the patient. And they're going to tell you what happened to the patient. Now patient came, this was the blood pressure, now the blood pressure is going there. So you are assessing, and you are making a diagnosis. And they will say, what are you monitoring patient here? Is for ICP. Everyone is all right. So what do you see in ICP? Now if I'm a nurse and I'm just saying, patient, I'm monitoring ICP. But what is in ICP? So what do we have in ICP? Vital sign, pupil reaction, level of consciousness. Everyone is okay. And what are the signs here in level of consciousness here? Is the vital sign, the pulse is going, uh, Blood pressure is up, pulse and respiration is low. Next page, Glasgow Coma Scale. Glasgow Coma Scale is very important, we understand, for your exam also and for all of us. What is Glasgow Coma Scale? Underline the word coma. What is coma? Write down the word non-responding. Your patient is not responding and you are monitoring coma scale. In your question, they might say, patient is in coma. Patient was not responding for four weeks. Today, after four weeks, you are turning your patient. And what did patient did? He moved his hand. What does it mean? Patient felt, you guys remember, painful stimuli. Respond to what? Painful uh, stimuli. And they're saying, patient is respond. What would you document when your patient moved his hand? Patient was responding. What? Your stimulation. And then they will ask you, where do you document? You're going to say in Glasgow Coma Scale. So I want you to highlight the word. Which patient do you monitor coma scale when they're not responding? They're in coma, head injury patient. And what do we monitor here? Underline the word eyes. You are monitoring their motor. Motor means their hand, their body, the muscle, and the verbal. You go in patient room. Patient never opened eyes. Patient never said a word. And you go in the room. Mr. Jones, good morning. And patient start opening his eyes. Is he responding? Yes. Responding to your voice. When you are going in the room and they say, patient said few words, but you don't understand the word. But what does the patient is still doing? Trying to talk. So what is this assessment here is Glasgow Coma Scale. So let me remind, is what is a Glasgow Coma Scale is? Uh, you are monitoring for which patient? Those who are not responding and they are in coma. Patient, so and what is normal a scale is? 15, 1 to 15. And patient below 7 to 8 indicate is coma. So below 8 or 7 means patient is in coma. They give you a question, when you are turning your patient, patient is responding, what would be the scale? Are you going to take it low higher or you will go lower? Take it higher. Because why? Patient is getting better. You have one answer, patient scale is 7. Another answer, patient scale is now 10, and patient scale is 15. They're not complete 15, but they're responding. Maybe your better answer would be what? Now they're getting better. So remember the wording is not what you memorize and what we memorize, Glasgow Coma Scale. Glasgow Coma Scale is used for patient who is in coma 
or patient who was not responding, but all of a sudden they start responding and you're going to monitor. And what are we monitoring three things here? Their eyes, their verbal, and their hands or motor response. And if they're getting better, you go on the next. So I think uh, is glass coma scale, everyone should know. ICP, I will stop here and uh, we'll see them tomorrow. Same time.